Coffee continues to witness a healthy demand in both developed and developing markets. With over 400 billion cups consumed each year, it is the most popular drink worldwide. Hello and welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. My name is Zuena Bachu and I'll be your host. The African coffee is valued as one of the most prime quality produced globally. And in this episode, we take a look at the coffee sector in Africa and the climate change impact on the sector. Agriculture continues to be the main employer of Africa's increasingly young population of about 1.1 billion inhabitants. More than 60% of the population of Sub-Saharan Africa is smallholder farmers, and about 23% of Sub-Saharan Africa's GDP comes from agriculture. Africa's 25 coffee-producing countries are home to over 716 million people, and in some of those countries, coffee is an important commodity in terms of both export earnings and generating income for smallholder farmers. However, over the last few years, climate impact has burdened coffee production on the continent. The climate change has actually uh, affected uh, the coffee sector. It's very clear in Rwanda we've been experiencing uh, uh, different patterns uh, of weather which have implications on the crop sizes, uh, the diseases that attack the crops and so on. Uh, and so we uh, have seen the impact and we just need to kind of stand ready to do what we can to mitigate where, we, where it's possible. Climate change has affected the production of coffee uh, one, by causing uh, what we call CBDs, uh, coffee berry diseases, to uh, a decline in production, uh, which eventually hiked up uh, prices for cherry, pri for cherry price. So the higher the price for cherry goes up, of course, the higher the price for roasted coffee that we use for brewing coffee goes up. And also that automatically means that we have to increase the price for price per cup of coffee that we serve. The increasingly unpredictable weather patterns caused by climate change pose a serious threat to coffee production in Africa. Disastrous effects of climate change are negatively affecting coffee plants across Africa, and this ultimately affects production. Rwanda hosted the 2021 annual meetings of the Inter-African Coffee Organization, which address challenges being faced and explore different opportunities that might be untapped in the coffee sector. These meetings like this, I used to hear about them just on radio. Now I see them happening in Rwanda, so that means the government and the readers and the institution are investing in more to make sure the industry growth, the industry grow and the, and the focusing and the look away to make it more sustainable. Uh, we attended this symposium mostly to learn what uh, different governments around the continent of Africa are doing to support the coffee sector in general. I'm here on the on invitation of NAEB uh, to attend the Inter-African Coffee Organization uh, in Rwanda. Rwanda is a member state. Is a, uh, member state. And um, IACO uh, supported my project for promoting uh, the domestic consumption of a locally produced coffee. And uh, that's why I'm here. In light of climate change, COVID and dwindling markets, coffee producers expect governments to actively participate in finding solutions to the unique problems faced by the sector and chart a robust course of action for building resilience and response to the issues. Uh, for me, at the moment, what I think the public sector can do is to really kind of rethink through the entire organization of the coffee sector. So not just in Rwanda, but also across the entire continent of Africa, understanding the different challenges that the farmers are having and really kind of come up with a full survey of all the issues that we are encountering and then kind of create a roadmap on how we are going to address that. I mean, the most pressing issue I think is on productivity. 
uh, productivity across the continent is very low. When you compare the number of farmers uh, across the continent of Africa and the area of land uh, you know, farmed with coffee, and look at the production out of it, and you compare it with uh, what we get in countries in Latin America, you realize that productivity is a big issue, and I think that the government can play a big role in addressing that, because that's going to be key if we want to ensure sustainability across the sector on the continent. I think the biggest role is going to be played by us, the players in the sector already, by educating the mass about the benefits of drinking their own coffee. Because COVID taught us a big, huge lesson consume locally, you grow the economy. So um, I think we uh, as a players, coffee shop, whoever is involved in the coffee value chain has a role to play in educating the mass on the best uh, or the importance of drinking, of consuming their own coffee here. It's going to protect the uh, it's going to protect the farmers from the price for international price fluctuations and also it's going to impact positively our economies and also Health-wise, yeah, our uh, health is far more the health, and plus the, uh, the population is going to have good health because of consuming coffee. Because coffee has got a lot of benefits. At the end of the day, the readers they are there for us, so they they try to be the the, the guidance, but they also try to be the the the, the connect between the global market, uh, the local market to the global market. So every time they're trying to see how they can improve the, 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 those policy and the guidance to be able to uh, access on or the, the market to be able to make the business. Because if the, the, any type of sector does well, the, the readers and the government in, in such, they do also well, especially economically and to the country development. Despite accounting for around 12% of world coffee production, Africa still consumes a relatively small amount of coffee, with the bulk of raw coffee beans exported to the world markets. Uh, I think, uh, you know, coffee is a very long supply chain. Uh, we have producing countries and we have consuming countries. And in between, there's a big chain that uh, leads to uh, when the coffee reaches the final consumer. Now, in order for uh, the sector to be sustainable, everyone on the chain has to be making profits. Now, I think we have uh, uh, those big uh, coffee companies in the world uh, making profits, but we've also seen them taking initiatives to address some of the challenges we are having. Uh, men are doing a lot of good work in addressing the issue of climate change. Uh, but I also feel like uh, with more collaboration between the origin where the coffee is farmed and uh, you know, the end where the coffee is consumed, there is still a lot of, a lot of work that we can do together to ensure that uh, you know, everyone in the supply chain is actually benefiting from uh, you know, the activity of farming coffee or being involved in the coffee sector. Me and my colleagues opening up a coffee, a coffee place, uh, like we, we, we were liking coffee, we were like people would take coffee a lot. And, uh, and also we had an idea of uh, promoting coffee, coffee education. It was our main idea, like coffee education. So like, we have a, a lot of restaurants here in Kigali, coffee shops, but promoting coffee mainly to the youth we had to open a coffee shop. Okay, we are, we're helping a lot of people getting, getting to know about coffee, getting to know how to drink coffee, getting to know that we can actually drink our coffee that we produce, because mostly coffee is actually exported outside. If they could actually keep a little bit of good quality coffee in Rwanda, not selling it to the, to the other countries, we would actually get the good coffee that we want. So we ourselves, uh, ourselves uh, harvesting, growing it, and then drinking it will be a very good uh, culture, it's fun and uh, we could actually be more productive with coffee, as you know what coffee does. As an upcoming market, Africa has the unique opportunity to incorporate green and sustainable practices while modernizing its mechanisms with the use of the latest technology to improve 
productivity, quality, and efficacy in agriculture. That is all for today's episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. You're with me, Zuena Bachu. If you want to join in on the conversation, write to us on Twitter at CNBC Africa, or you can tag me directly at Zuena Bachu. Thank you very much for watching.